I'm guessing they will. Well, didn't we get lucky that they've come back just as we've arrived? No. They're kind of playing dead, acting like, oh, we're just perching on a branch, nothing to see here. But we already know, my little oxpecker friends, that you have got a nest in this tree. So, let's see if they show us exactly where it is. It's interesting how highly specialized these red-billed oxpeckers are, and they're, they're, they do have a cousin, the yellow-billed oxpecker, which we see occasionally from time to time in this area. But between the two oxpeckers that you do get, what an incredible adaption that they, they've gone through to feed on the ectoparasites that cause so much harm to the herbivores in this area. Come on guys, show us into your nest, and then we'll leave. If you can hear a chewing noise, that's me chewing on my breakfast. It's not a hyena chewing on the tire of the car. Oh, the one ox pecker left, I didn't see where it went. Who knows, maybe it flew, did you see where it went, Brian? Yeah, it went into the distance. Okay, not into the hole. It would be really nice if it did go into the, the hole because, and, the, and that nest cavity, because if it did go in and there were chicks, we would certainly hear the chicks chirping and calling and trying to outcompete one another for any morsels that the adult may be feeding to them. So we would certainly hear a, a little commotion going on if the adult did land there and the chicks had hatched. Coming closer. It's coming closer to the hole. So the hole that it needs to go into now, folks, is on the branch on the right-hand side of the screen closest towards us. And it's slowly creeping towards us. Come on. Come on. We come in peace. We're not going to disturb your babies. We know they're in there. So don't try and hide it from us. Here he goes, or she. Trying to be as sly about it as possible. This is awesome. Come on, there we go. So now it's very close, folks. There's the cavity, it's poking its head into it. And 
there we go. That is where the oxpecker is nesting. And I'm just going to listen closely. I can't seem to hear any commotion, which leads us to... believe that they are still incubating these eggs. As soon as the chicks hatch, you tend to hear quite a lot of noise coming out from them when the adults return. Who would have thought that folks driving past this tree that there are a pair of red-billed oxpeckers nesting in it. I mean from this angle you can hardly even tell that there's a cavity in that branch so and again, it just reaffirms how important elephants' roles are in this ecosystem. By killing trees, they are creating microhabitats. So the exact same tree we looked at initially this morning, a knobthorn acacia, which had been ring-barked and stripped of its bark by elephants, and will die and eventually look like this, and then become home to other birds and mammals. So I think that worked out quite well, folks. We achieved what we set out to achieve, our plan B, after the hyena failed. At least we could fall back on the red-billed oxpecker's nest. And now every time we come here, we can keep a, an ear out and an eye out and see whether these chicks start to make a noise soon and therefore lead us to believe that they've obviously hatched. And then once they have hatched, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on them and see how long it takes them to fledge and fly off and how many of them survive.